Hey, it's Dave O'Neill here, and uh, welcome back to the debrief. Yes, so I haven't done one for a long time because, I, because of COVID, basically, uh, live work has returned, but because I'm so paranoid, I'm often not, I'm often in the car by myself. Um, but that's starting to change. Uh, there's an upcoming one uh, going to Mildura with Brad Oaks and Billy Styles, which was great fun. It's good to do a road trip again. It's just good to see somewhere new. Mildura was great, and I went to Sydney. It was also good just to see uh, somewhere new. So hopefully more more debriefs coming up soon. And I know I used to ring people during lockdown, but I've stopped doing that. So I want to get back on the road, back to doing gigs and uh, talking to comics about comedy. Now, if you're in Melbourne at the moment, the comedy festival is on. Make sure you get out and see stuff. I'm doing a show called Best Hair in the Business. Where, well, I just don't talk about my hair. I talk a lot about COVID, actually, and, um, you know, the usual stuff, um, all new material, as we say. Anyway, uh, come along and see it and come up and say hello. There's other great shows on. Some of the, the legends from this uh, podcast, Brad Oaks is doing a show, Billy Styles is doing a show. Oh, all the, all the people that you've heard on this podcast, some Denise Scott, Judith Lucy, doing a fantastic show. Um, and of course, you know, people like Dave Thornton, Dilrick J. Singer, the Dum Dum Guys, Carl and Tommy, everyone's out there doing shows. Over in Melbourne, there's a, there's a, there's a plethora of talent out there. Kitty Flanagan's not doing a show. Of course, I do the other podcast of Junkies with her, and she is preparing another series of Fisk, which is very exciting, uh, to see that sitcom back on uh, TV, and if you haven't seen it, it's on iView for free. Have a look. It's very funny. Perfect show. I watched it with my teenagers. It's actually the perfect show because there's no there's one F-bomb in the whole thing. Not that kids mind swearing, but there's no real, you know, adult themes. There's no, you know, sex scenes or anything. Anyway, I'm just rambling now. Um, okay, so here's just a quick chat with Lawrence Mooney. I uh, did a gig with him the other night, and he was an hour late. Not his fault. Not his fault. But, you know, Moon Man, he's um, – well, he'll tell you the story um, – we love we love Lawrence Mooney, but he's had a bit of a uh, tumultuous time. Um, got sacked from radio. I mean, I've been sacked from radio. There's no no shame in that. No shame. The problem is though, when you get sacked in radio, the only other job is a footy coach. It appears in the uh, paper. Uh, if you're in Melbourne, it'll be in the Herald Sun. If you're in Sydney, it'll be in the Telegraph, uh, Brisbane, Courier Mail. Oh, I don't need to do all the papers, the Advertiser in Adelaide, <laughs> the, the uh, Western Australian. Anyway, if you get sacked. It's a public, it appears in the uh, gossip columns. And, and by average people, well, you know, my brother's been sacked. It wasn't in the paper. But anyway, yeah, he got sacked. And um, so, yeah, I apologise for the length of the um, the um, podcast, but I just had to drop Mooney off um, after the gig. So I didn't get a chance to talk to him before the gig. But anyway, we had a quick chat, and it's always good to catch up with the Moon Man and see what he's doing because um, he's a true... True comedian and a journeyman of the industry. Anyway, I'll return and, uh, yeah, coming up, we've got a Mildura trip and then hopefully more stuff on the debrief. All right. All right, welcome to the debrief. Dave O'Neill here, holding a microphone, driving. No, I'm not doing that. It's too dangerous. Um, <laughs> anyway, we've, we've done the gig. Normally, we speak to someone before the gig. I was, I was picking Lawrence up. Lawrence Mooney, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, yes, Dave O'Neill, it's very nice to join you on this podcast again. The last time we were doing it, we were down on the Great Ocean Road. Oh, that's right, in your car. Were we in Lawn? Yes, we're or, in Lawn. Lawn. Uh, and I was in the MGB... GT, which I'd bought way back in 2017, and I still own. You still own that car? Yeah, I'm doing body work on it now. I've taught myself to do body work. That was a cool car. Uh, and it was very noisy though. Yeah, it's got a beautiful note to it. The anyway, very different trip um, tonight from the Grand View 
into Cherry Bar where I'm meeting James the Hound Dog Young, who is Jesus. the nightmare. I've the, heard that. The nightmare of Melbourne. So what Sally Cab mean? became the mayor. So it, it's like a cultural ambassador, if you will. Yes, yes. We're I've recording? That. Well, yeah, we're recording. Don't yeah, worry. I'm just great. checking the level. But, um, um, James Young, I knew back in Triple R days when I had to replace him on the breakfast show, and he said, what we're looking for is me 10 years ago. Bud Weigel. Bud Weigel, he said, but, you know, at 30, you're too old for breakfast radio. Now, look at the current breakfast radio hosts around Australia. I Average know. age 50? Tell me this. How, how were you sacked? Because I was sacked from commercial radio. So... We did a show. This was on Vega, which is now Smooth FM. So I went from Nova to Vega. Great. A lot of people say great move. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? I was speaking to somebody the other day that was a massive fan of that breakfast show. Oh, God. Um, that loved... Um, there was me, Sean McHale, and uh, Denise. and then Denise Scott, yes. Then, then there was another version, me, Chrissy, and Dicko. So anyway. Yeah. Um, one of my wife's best friends, Rowena Calvert... Very smart woman, very successful businesswoman. Um, and she loved that. And she shows. said, I loved, because uh, I mentioned I was going to do this gig. She said, say to Dave O'Neill that I loved that breakfast show. And I was devastated when not only did they get rid of the breakfast show, they got rid of the radio station. Yes, <laughs> yes. Well, Vega was a weird experiment. They wanted to do like a cross between, say, ABC Talk radio and Gold FM or, you know, yeah. WSFM. And it started with no ads. Remember yes. that? Yes, and it also would play really weird songs. Like, say, an Elton John album track or... But anyway... Um, yeah, like Hunky Dory by David Bowie. Yeah, weird, weird stuff. But then, uh, anyway, so what happened? And, we and did a Francis show. Leach was on oh, vocal, yes, wasn't he? Yes, he was. God, Francis has been fucked over a few times. Yeah, he hasn't got he? fucked over on the ABC. Yeah, and so did his wife. Lynn Holtzane went oh, away on maternity leave. Maternity leave, and Red Simons ended up in that position for fourteen years. Oh, mate, I was the guy. The who... ABC puts itself out there as this equal opportunity employer and very sensitive and all that. They're just mate. as cutthroat as anyone else. That, if you're not oh. rating, they'll take you into the car park and give you a bowling ball. Boom, boom, boom. You're gone. <laughs> I, I replaced Red temporarily, and I can tell you how many phone calls or text messages. Where's Red? When's Red coming back? Where's I Red? love that. Where's Red? Where's Red? Damien Callan and I, uh, we used to be in a duo, as you know, and we yeah. filled in for Roy and HG for oh, six weeks God. on Triple J. Now, oh. Roy and HG have a very loyal following, Man. and so we would answer the phone during the show, and we were doing a little bit of sketch. We did the... Um, not the Kelly boys about <laughs> about a bunch of bush rangers that weren't as famous as the Kellys. <laughs> um, and Love you know, it. playing music, having chats, whatever. Uh, week six, our final Sunday. I think this sporting life was on a Sunday. Saturday, yeah, it was. Right? It was a Sunday. Sunday it used yeah. to be on a Sunday. And uh, phone rings, and I pick up the phone. It's like hello, and he goes. Uh, g'day, guys. Um, <laughs> when, are, when are Roy and HG coming back? And we said, oh, Roy and HG are coming back next week, mate. He goes, good, because you fucking suck. <laughs> <laughs> and that was, of course, we didn't know about delay and we were yeah. recording. And that was on air. Oh, that was on air. <laughs> That's fantastic. Well, my first day on Triple R Breakfast, a guy rang up and said, Get that bogan off the air. And I said to Chris Atzis, who's he talking about? And he's Which like, one? you, mate. He's talking about you. It's not Kate Leanbrook, it's you. I'm like, oh. Oh. That reminds me of, you know, Rove used to sell Foxtel door-to-door, right? And he was really? doing he, he was doing these puppets with Duff called Short and Curlies. <laughs> and they were, they were in between shows on the Foxtel, very early Foxtel days. Oh, so like an interstitial. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I was like, hey, I'm short, I'm curly. And they had these puppets, right? And he said he knocked on one door and the guy goes, yeah, I've already got um, Foxtel. I really love it. He goes, but well, can you give the guy some feedback? He's like, yeah, no worries. I really hate those puppets. Short and curly. And Rose said he just sat in the gutter and went, you know, because no one had Foxtel back then. No one. Remember Mercury, the first cable? Oh, yes. Uh, I don't know what was on it, what I, you could possibly get. But just talking about... Um, 
backhanded compliments. Limo was telling me about a gig. He goes, you know, you get off stage and someone goes, yeah. oh, listen, I really love the show, but... And yeah, you know, oh, yeah, no, yeah, here, here, here we go, here we go. Here we go, here comes the clip. And, uh, you know, what you want to do is get out of the auditorium as quickly as possible oh, man. before yeah. someone gives you the backhanded. Yeah. He said he was almost clear, almost at his car. Oh. And he said there were four people getting into the car beside him. And he, um, <laughs> this bloke said, he goes, geez, Lemo was great tonight, wasn't he? And he was just about into his car. He's like, um, unlike normal. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible. I think my favourite one was, you know, remember Richard Heath? He used to be a Melbourne comic. Yeah. Richard, he was great. He, he was really good. Yeah, and he, he, got, he got sacked from his job driving he was a driver or something drove, drove tested tires out right and so the great gab rossi who sold tickets for the comics land said come and sell tickets with me we're going to melton shopping center right and so, to sell tickets for the comedy club or the you know, comics lounge so the first shop he goes into is a cobbler an old italian bloke with a little wife sitting next to him mm. and the guy goes before he says anything we don't want it and he goes you don't, you don't even know what i'm selling he goes you sell comedy tickets and he goes yeah I am. And he goes, yes, we went the other night, you were on, and we didn't like it. <laughs> and he said he looked at the wife for a bit of, you know, nod of sympathy. The wife's just like, nah, yeah, I'm with my husband. We don't like you. He went and rang his wife, and she picked him up, and he stopped selling tickets that day. That was his first job. Fine, thanks, where, where is it? Where, oh, it's around little the corner. Riata. It's the old Little Riatas. The old pony. Right. The old pony. So we are here, we're and here. this is that. Uh, that's that. I'll, I'll ask you my questions quickly. What? Now, you were fantastic tonight at the Grandview. Thank you very much. What, what went well? To, I mean, what went well tonight um, in your gear? Well, you asked me after the show, you said, have you ever done that rub and tug <laughs> or nail salon gear before? And I said, well, I've spoken about it, but I've never done it. Very and that funny. is... You know, the cash industry that is rub and tugs, because there's massage places all over. Man, there are a lot in Melbourne, and there are a lot in Sydney, all over, aren't and, there? Yeah, and it's Asian women milking men. Um, <laughs> and, and you reckon they get a choice? And when the bus pulls up in the morning, it's like, what do you want to do? Do you want to <sighs> do old ladies' nails, or do you want to wank men? It's like, I know what my choice is. <laughs> Some old bitch's seashell stinking feet in her corns and bunions, or wank a bloke off. <laughs> I'll wank a bloke off any day. So that went well. <laughs> that went really well. <laughs> they did. What, um, what didn't go well? I, no, I didn't have a, a no. problem. Do you know what? When you're when you're riffing, you did mention Shane Warne. Oh <laughs> uh, yes, I said Shane Warne died. What he doing? What he loves? Uh, yeah, popping Viagra's and getting a massage. <laughs> While there was a masseuse in his room. Yeah. Well, yeah. I think there was four last count. <laughs> so that's why he was probably taking anyway. It. Anyway, it was natural causes, and there was yeah. no toxicology report, so we don't know, and it's all we speculation. Um, what what doesn't go well when I go on stage and I'm riffing is when you stop and try and shoehorn in material. Yeah, there's yeah, a real change yeah. Of gear, changing pace, and then you I go, get it. Yeah, oh, yeah. and anyway, Here's me my and my routine. wife, yeah, yeah. where I'm just if you're free flowing. Oh, and you can keep that funny. going, then that's good. You know yeah. what it's like when oh. you're up on stage and you're just bouncing off the audience and pulling things out of the air. It's very funny. You're snapping goals over your shoulder, and then all of a sudden you guys go, anyway, let's shoehorn in a bit here. <laughs> Were any logistical things get in the way? Well, probably. I don't think the lighting's great at your gig. No, You've I was down a light. light. No, I was down a light. Well, the, broke I, today. I, when I went Very in, well no, observed, actually. When I went in there, I went... Because I said to Des... Come on, mate. I'm down a light. Uh, we'll be right. Yeah, That's funny you notice that because, yeah, very obs- I normally have another one on the other side. It, what it felt like was doing a gig in a car park and <laughs> your dad was using his car yeah, for the light. lighting. Well, <laughs> <laughs> and how can we do better next time? Uh, well, get some lights. Get some lights. And Lighting's you, everything. You were also, you weren't late, but it was late. Because you were well, doing other gigs. Yeah, oh, the knock-on God. effect, I'd finished my gig, went to Silent Comedy at Flinders yeah. Street where... Um, they were running late. They were running late. Yeah. That's always going to run over. Then I got into... You said, 
if you don't um, if get in a fight at the cab rank oh, yeah, I said at Flinders Street Station. <laughs> I said I'll wait and get, and then I said I'll so get in the cab. We're all in a queue, and these two women go to jump in a cab that's just pulled up, and I said, hey, join the queue, and they went, I get fucked. <laughs> and I said, they said, there is no queue. And I said, there's a queue. You know how to queue. You know what a queue is. And then this woman just stared at me, and she kept just saying, you're pathetic. Really? You're pathetic. And I said, have you had a stroke? <laughs> <laughs> you, I predicted the fight and in then the, the she, queue. Yeah. And then she, maybe, maybe the common denominator is Mooney, cab rank, fight. But she gets her phone out and she's filming me. Really? Yeah. And That's she's a new me thing. Me. Yeah. And she goes, yeah, well, what have you got to say now? And I said, well, all I've got to say is what I said before is you're a queue jumper. <laughs> And in Australia, we don't like queue jumpers. Fantastic. <laughs> oh. So that's on some bogan dead shit's <laughs> phone somewhere. And she'll be showing her friends and they'll be going, oh, oh that's the moon, That's man. the moon. <laughs> <laughs> the fire from Triple M in Sydney, that bloke. Yeah, he got fired. Do you think people in Melbourne are aware of that? I don't think they are. Oh, l- listen. We, a, we would know. A little bit. A little bit, know, yeah. Industry-wise. Industry, yeah, definitely. Um, Triple M listeners. Yeah. I think Marty has... Alluded to it without saying it. Oh, has he? Yeah. She got it. Because um, there was. Well, so he's the Melbourne Triple M host. And he's... you're good friends with him. Yeah. You and, you and she he was old. Very, very close friends. In fact, we were just talking today. I'd said to him, listen, the last five months has been a lot about me. And I just really appreciate you being there and appreciate your support. And I have been a decent friend along the journey because you can end up talking about these things endlessly. Oh, but he, he's been sacked from commercial radio. As he said to me once, Dave, the phone didn't ring for a year. He said to me, "Well, same. Uh, it was the same studio. It was the same job. Sydney wow. Breakfast Radio. Oh, was it? Yeah, that's cursed. I reckon. Uh, and he, we were in the same studio. And the interesting thing is that I rang him probably a year ago, and I said, "There's a, a um, a door stopper here," and I walk past it every day, and I look down to see where it was. And it was the shebangs. Oh, the, the shebangs comp- entire show catalog recorded on disc in this kind of like expanding file. It uses and a doorstopper. Used, used as a doorstopper. Because <laughs> <laughs> the whole shebang was a real thing. It was a that was popular. The shebang was massive. Yeah, the bang. Because it started well, it started as a drive show and it yeah, was a it huge did, drive it? show yeah. in the time of you know. Um, Hamish and Andy. Yes. And there was drive shows. There were big drive shows around. And then uh, in their wisdom, they went, if this works in drive, what we should do is take Fifi and Marty and put them in breakfast in Sydney. Sydney, yeah. Like, oh. like, do you know, it's like a transplant where it's like, do you know what? This kidney is working really well. Why don't we use it as a heart? <laughs> yeah, it's bad. In a transplant patient is like, okay, that's not going to work. The body's I, going to reject it. I saw Marty on this very street we're parked in the city walking to Midnight Oil two nights ago. Do you know Marty has got an apartment? Around somewhere. Street. Yeah. He's a big Midnight Oil fan. Massive I, I Midnight know Oil that. fan. Yeah, I didn't know that. And, uh, yeah, a great lover of Peter Garrett too. Oh, I'm going to go you got to go, mate. Okay, thanks for I'm going to go and podcast. speak to James the Hound Dog Young. No. Dave O'Neill, always a pleasure. Never a chore, mate. I really love you. Mate, good to see you, Lawrence. Thanks for listening to The Debrief. Chuck, 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 chuck,